What's up everyone, Savartek here and in this video I'm going to show you how an advanced keylogger is made that basically takes keystrokes of a computer and emails it to you. Um, this video is for educational purposes only so don't be using it with malicious intent. Without any further ado, let's get started. I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible. So we're going to be using Sublime Text for text editor and we're going to be using Python 3.11.2 and we're going to be using an icon for our keylogger to mask it. So the reason we use this version is because that's what works uh, last time I tried it. Select Windows Installer 64-bit. It'll give you that executable file. You'll open it. Don't forget to click on that because if you don't, it'll cause you problems later. While this is loading, what we'll do is we'll create our environment folder. So we'll call this anything. And while this is also being loaded, what we'll do is we'll go get an icon, right? Go on this website, look for a gear icon. We'll take this one, download ICO, I, ICO, yep. You'll see the file type is icon here. This is what we're going to use to mask our keylogger. You go on desktop, put it in your folder. And let's rename it just icon, right? Then go to view. Make sure you have file name extensions enabled here. Now that we're done, so our setup is successful, we're going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to install the important libraries. So you're going to go come here and say pip install pi and put. We're going to need these libraries. Repeat the same for this one can close out of this and we'll get started. Now, before we get into coding the keylogger, one important step is to configure your Gmail account that will send the keystrokes to you appropriately. So what we'll do is go here on your Google account, go on manage your Google account, go on security, make sure you have two-step verification enabled and look up app passwords. What you're doing here is you're setting a password just enter your regular password here. So what you're doing here, you're setting the password for your Keylogger app specifically. So let's create something and call it something non-conspicuous. Project keys, right? Create. And it gives you a temporary password. It generates this password for you. It's not temporary, but it's alternative. So you copy it. And I'm going to show you where we're going to use it, right? Just keep it somewhere safe. I'll show you. Now let's get to the coding part. Now I'm not going to pretend I'm typing a bunch of code and explaining it as I go. I'm just going to paste it. So you're going to come here. You'll create a new text document, but call it and change the extension to PY. This is why you need to have the file name extensions enabled. And also you need to make sure that Defender is disabled. Come here and you would do manage settings and then you would click switch this off, right? So the reason you do that is so it doesn't flag the Python script as bad. You just need to disable it while we code. Open Sublime Text, drag this onto her, and then we'll paste the code that I copied in the background, right? You, you'll you probably have to use the link in my GitHub link in the description of the video down below. Let's explain this. The temporary password that I got from Google, what you're gonna do is, the app password, right? Good thing I saved it there. This is very unconventional. Um, paste it on your password variable in between the quotes, and then you're gonna put your actual email here. So I'm not gonna show you my actual temporary email and also make sure that you're using a, a disposable email, not your everyday email, okay? Let's get to the code explanation. This imports the appropriate libraries. This stores the keystrokes before they reach the threshold number. After it reaches that number, it sends it via email to you and reset. So this holds the keystrokes. This makes sure that you have a clean log. So let's add one more thing there. Um, so if the key is space or enter or shift or tab, usually it would add this gibberish right there, but instead you replace it with characters you like, or in this case, a new line, or in this case, a back tick for backspace, right? This, again, make sure every time it reaches 100 keystrokes, 
it sends it. You can change it to 300, 500, 1,000, whatever you want. And finally, um, this handles the email server where it sends the email to the uh, email you choose. And this is going to be the subject line. This is the first thing that actually runs in the code. It starts the keylogger, right? Now I'll replace it with my actual email. So go ahead and save this, close out of it, and we're going to compile this to the actual executable file that we wanted in the first place. Type PowerShell there and type this. A little bit of context here. This is the module we installed at the beginning of the video. This makes sure it runs in the background. This makes sure it compiles really fast. And this is the name of this file. So if you call this something different, you're going to call it something different there. And this is the icon that masks the executable file. So it looks like a settings app or something very innocent, right? And once you're done with that, hit enter. It compiles it for you. You can exit out of that. Go to the distributable folder, this folder. And this is your end result. Copy this. And this is what you're going to be using to plant on victims machine. That's what a hacker would do. We're good people. We're not going to do that. But let's show you how that would work. So they would likely call it something like something very innocent. And then they would put it somewhere on your computer. Somewhere on your computer that you're probably not going to mess with it. They would run it. As you can see, nothing opens up, but it's already running in the background. So how is this dangerous? Let's just say it's a normal day and you're trying to sign in to your bank account. Pretend we're on this website and someone is entering their email and password. What happens is they're just having a good day, but in the background, this is being recorded. I'm going to type in some more stuff so it reaches 100 characters because it only sends the email after 100 characters. When the user types something, it sends it via email to you. As you can see here, this is what they type. Someone at gmail.com. This is their password, my secret password. And this is part of their password too. You can tell they hit the control key there and... You remember where we type, the user is typing normal stuff. This is pretty much it. This is how the keylogger works. And last thing I will show you is how to make it persistent. Persistence is something in hacking where the hacker makes sure their stuff is still running after you restart the computer after they've left, you know? So to make sure it's persistent, you'll copy hit this. You'll hit Windows key plus R and you'll type shell colon startup. And what you do here is you paste a shortcut. So, right. So now what happens is you don't need to do anything else. Every time the user starts the computer, this folder executes every shortcut that's in there. By extension, the keylogger starts and start recording. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep coming with more. See you in the next video and stay safe out there. Lock your computers. Don't let anyone just put stuff on your computer and certainly do not download anything you find on the internet and turn back your Windows Defender back online.